Hi, I'm Jen. I'm one of the directors here at Interquest, as many of you know. So our Wellbeing Weekly has taken a different turn this week. Um, we're going to be focusing on grief and loss. A hugely intense topic can be quite emotive and can be quite difficult. It's true to say that actually many of us will have experienced a sense of loss, especially in these recent times, whether that's the loss of routine and structure, the loss of seeing our family and friends, and even the loss of our education system as we know it. As we're planning to return back to school shortly, our children and parents and even each of us will need this acknowledging. It's not going to be the same. It will feel different and the school will look different we will perhaps feel that sense of loss, perhaps feeling sadness, even anger towards how things used to be. It's gonna be a bit of a tricky emotional time for us to navigate. So as we begin to experience this new norm, let's look to each other with kindness, let's listen to each other and acknowledge even the most uncomfortable of feelings as we work out the next steps together. We will ultimately going, be going through this sense of loss. It's also true to say that some of us may have experienced the ultimate loss, the death of a family member or a friend for whatever reason. This has to be the most hurtful part of life and one that is experienced by each of us in a unique and individual way. So for adults, when a loved one dies, it may be felt a little like this poem, perhaps um, this really resonates with some of you. It's called Grief Comes in Waves and the author that is unknown. As for grief, you'll find it comes in waves. When the ship is first wrecked, you're drowning with wreckage all around you. Everything floating around you reminds you of the beauty and the magnificence of the ship that was and is no more. And all you can do is float. You'll find some pieces of the wreckage and you'll hang on to them for a while. Maybe it's something physical. Maybe it's a happy memory or a photograph. Maybe it's a person who is also floating. For a while, all you can do is float and stay alive. In the beginning, the waves are a hundred feet tall and crash over you without mercy. They come 10 seconds apart and don't even give you time to catch your breath. All you can do is hang on and float. After a while, maybe weeks, maybe months, you'll find the waves are still a hundred feet tall, but they come further apart. When they come, they still crash all over you and wipe you out. But in between, you can breathe, you can function. You never know what's going to trigger the grief. It might be a song, a picture, a street intersection, the smell of a cup of coffee. It can be just about anything and the wave comes crashing down. But in between waves, there is life. Somewhere down the line, and it's different for everyone, you'll find that the waves are only 80 feet tall or 50 feet tall. And while they still come, they come further apart. You can see them coming, an anniversary, a birthday or Christmas, or landing at Oha. You can see it coming for the most part and prepare yourself. And when it crashes over you, you know that somehow you will again come out the other side, soaking wet, spluttering, still hanging on to some tiny piece of the wreckage, but you'll come out. Take it from an old guy, the waves never stop coming and somehow you don't really want them to, but you learn that you'll survive them and other waves will come and you'll survive them too. If you're lucky, you'll have lots of scars from lots of loves and lots of shipwrecks. That poem, I think, rings true for many of us that have experienced the loss of a loved one. For our children, though, it is slightly different rather than it being maybe a big ocean and dealing with these big waves. It's likened to um, something called puddle jumping, where our children find themselves occasionally feeling really overwhelmed, tearful, angry or withdrawn, having jumped into one of those large puddles and really missing that person that has died. Shortly after, they can seem to be back, be back to normal, asking what's for tea or wanting to go out and play. This is totally normal. It's called 
puddle jumping. They immerse themselves for a short while and then they're out again and then they'll revisit the puddle from time to time. So we all handle grief differently but it's important to notice the developmental stages, the things that are considered normal and hopefully some of the activities and the things that we've put together in this Wellbeing Weekly will really help you to understand the topic a little further and I hope that actually during this time that you'll be able to dip in and out of the content, that you'll be able to look after yourself and really, I guess, promote that whole self-care thing. You need to look after yourself in these very difficult times. So have a go at looking at some of those links that we've sent. And if you have any questions or you feel yourself you need support, then please do get in touch and we'll be able to point you in the right direction. So thanks for listening and I hope to see you soon. Sending you all loads of virtual hugs. Okay, bye.